goes by the name of Drama, and he's with me right now. What's good, homie? I jumped in perfect time, man. How's it going, Kenny? I'm good, man. Thanks for being on. I appreciate you. Hey, thanks for having me, man. It's always a pleasure. So, before I get into, you know, catching up with you, how you feeling health-wise? How's the family? How's everybody doing during these times? Man, I think we're all uh, seeing the glasses half full and just making the most of the situation and the cars were dealt, man. Everybody's doing pretty good. Everybody's healthy, so... I'm uh, I'm in good spirits, man. That's encouraging to hear, bro. Um, so I was very excited, looking forward to seeing Tech Nine, um, and his Interfere tour, um, and the Lexington show was scheduled for May next month, but Tech Nine announced as of yesterday that the tour has been pushed back to the fall. And uh, and the Lexington shows, I believe, is will be at October. Um, Jelly Roll, because of other um, commitments, won't be there for the rescheduled tour. Taking his spot is Will Be Wits. Um, and again, the Lexington show is coming at uh, in October. So um, mm-hmm. everybody that already purchased a ticket, just hang on to it. And uh, hopefully things will be better by then. Um, and uh, we'll go on from there. So um, you were scheduled to be at the Lexington show. But obviously things have changed. Um, as far as, you know, shows. Like how many shows that you had scheduled prior to everything being shut down? Oh, so many, man. And uh, first and foremost, I would like to say that uh, the show on the 18th, of course, it was special the way that it was booked and supposed to go down. Um, but me personally, I'm such a Ritz fan, you know, and I've shared the stage with him a few times now and I uh, got to know him a little bit. And I'm extremely thrilled to know that, you know, even though because of the obligations that Jelly Roll already had in the fall, that we're still able to get somebody like Ritz on the bill, too. It's exciting. So um, shout out to Be Good. Me and Be Good will both be opening up that show. And uh, <clears throat> that's a homie of mine from Louisville, man. He's super talented and extremely fit for the bill. But to, uh, to answer your question, man, we had a lot of shows. Um, April was packed out, man. It was like a small tour. Um, we were supposed to hit Goodlitzville, Tennessee. The, uh, last week of March, I had a benefit show. That was a metal show. I was going to perform at, uh, Riff Raff, Tom McDonald in Chicago on April 22nd. Wow. And I was actually supposed to, I was supposed to co-headline with uh, Twista at the Bourbon Hall. Oh, and the good news is, as of right now, it looks like every show is still set in motion to go down. So the uh, Bourbon Hall show, we don't have a date on that yet. Of course, we're still kind of waiting on things to see how the world events are going to turn out. But... Uh, you know, I do know that he's still planning on coming to Louisville, Kentucky, so we can do that show. And then, of course, the Tech Nine and the uh, Rich show was postponed to October 18th. That's still going to go down. And uh, a few of these other shows, I believe, are still kind of in the air right now. But nothing's been set in stone, canceled. And, you know, I think we're all just kind of anxiously waiting to see what happens. But I think it'll be a really special time in the music scene, too, because everyone's going to be so sick of being you know, stuck behind doors that they're going to burst out to really come out and support, you know. Well, that is encouraging to hear that at least all the shows that you mentioned are on hold for now and been pushed back to, and some have been pushed back to later this year. So that is encouraging. So, um, and obviously we don't know how long this pandemic going to last. Um, but, right. But the, what's most important is everyone's health and well-being and um, flatten the curve, quarantine, social distancing. This is the normal that we are in now, and it's going to be something that we have to get used to for a while. It's not just weeks. It's pretty much months in my estimation. You know, I'm not a health expert. I'm not a doctor, but... It's just, I'm just looking at it as everyone else is. So, um, so salute to those artists for, you know, at least pushing their shows back. And not only that, but keeping you and, and be good 
on these shows. So um, y'all still be able to get that exposure and, and perform in front of you know audience and such. So that's pretty dope. Um, let's let's talk about this album that you put out late last year, Making a Martyr. I've heard the the record. I love it. I like the Angels joint. Um, talk about recording that song, man. Uh, that album all together. How did that feel, man? The album, man, it was, uh, well, first and foremost, again, I want to, before diving into that question, man, I want to make another shout out to somebody, uh, Ritual of Ether, man. We're actually quarantined in the house together. He's in the other room, but, uh, he produced that entire album from scratch, man. And, uh, him and I sat down on every track and, you know, we discussed it, the mood, the vision for it, you know, um, that album, it, it was really nerve wracking because, a lot of people give me feedback, and they don't really think it's too different from the first one, um, but the production value was increased drastically. Um, I've definitely brought a lot of the roots in of other genres that I've been inspired by since I started rapping as far as, like, EDM and metal and stuff like that, uh, thanks to Virtual Vether, you know, on the production side of things. But more than anything, that whole album was about healing, uh, growth, and evolution, you know, the first album, man, I was very blessed to get a lot of the opportunities that I did very quickly getting into hip hop, being the right places, the right time, proving myself for the right people. It definitely opened up a lot of doors for me, but I was still kind of in over my head. So we were pretty strategic about it. We, we took a lot of time to uh, plan it out. We, we tried not to rush it too much. And today I'm still very, very, you know, satisfied with the outcome of that record. And the new music that's coming on the way, too, just the uh, the changes from the first album to this new one, you know, it's really opened up a door of, uh, I don't know, like, I, I don't feel confined anymore to make a certain sound. It kind of opened up, like, a whole creative window for me to just jump through and really get a little more experimental and stuff. So that album's very special to me, man. Uh, you said something about the Angels track, man. That's actually, um, speak of which, you know, my brother the We Never Walk Alone movement, the name of the first album, the whole mental health etiquette side of things, that all spawned from my brother's suicide in 2017. And today is actually the, uh, today is actually would have been his 31st birthday. So I want to make a shout out to uh, to my brother, man, because if it wasn't for him, you know, I wouldn't be where I'm at today. I wouldn't be pursuing this lifestyle if it wasn't for the words that he told me before he died and his advice to pursue hip hop. So, Angels is a track that's on that record featuring Morgan Ashley, who did a phenomenal job on the hook and uh, really diving into their influence and how I still think that uh, they're with me today. Happy birthday to him and, and rest in peace. Um, con, you know, and, and salute to everyone that's dealing with that depression and still fighting, overcoming the demons and such. Um, for sure, for sure. Um, I definitely love that song, Angels. Um, definitely kind of reminds me of my cousin who died, um, under different circumstances, but it's definitely for the, a song for those that lost that, that loved one, that brother, or sister, or cousin, a family member, you know, so it's, yeah. you know, it's definitely relatable, you know, to everyone because everybody lost someone that they know and love, um, so, so you got that record out, Making a Martyr. That's available on digital music platforms. Go stream it. Go play it. And uh, spread the word about it. Support that, that good hip-hop. Uh, you released a new song this year called XOXO. And I'm actually going to play that song right after this interview. I'm going to play it in its entirety. Um, and before I do... Uh, let's 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 talk about the song, man. What what was it like recording XOXO? That song completely blew me away because for some reason, man, going into that record, um, I just overanalyzed stuff so much, man. For some reason, I didn't think that track would have been received as well. I was like, oh, it, it it feels a little different. I don't know about it. And there's been a recurring instance that happens with me and Ritual of Ether working together. You know, when we were tracking out making a martyr. There were tracks that I thought were going to hit really heavy that were really going to connect with people. They might have underperformed, but then he was usually right. 
he would call it. He'd be like, well, this song right here is going to do really well. This one right here is going to do really well. And this was one of those tracks. He said, I know this is going to perform, you know, extremely well. And uh, for some reason, it was a track that I was actually kind of insecure about. And once we actually put it out there, um, it's exceeded everything I've done before. Um, it's been very successful in regards to um, comparison of other tracks that I've put out. So that's a blessing, man. Recording the track, really, it was just, uh, it wasn't too specific as far as the content of it, telling the story. It was kind of inspired by a combination of previous breakups and, you know, just getting over something that's difficult and kind of knowing your own worth and getting out there and kicking ass, man. <laughs> so that record was uh, was a lot of fun to record, man. It was just a fun track. We, we actually, it, it came together pretty quickly. And it's it's been exciting, man, because Making a Martyr came out in October. And because of some life events and things, it took a little while to put another song out. So, you know, just like that, you're back at it with some music. And um, it's definitely a dope record. I like when people, when artists are willing to go a different route than usual. Uh, and, and, and it turns out pretty good. You and, and Roll, great chemistry, great understanding towards one another as far as putting out music. Um, you know, obviously that connection between the artist and the producer, chemistry is key, just being on the same page, obviously. How would you describe the chemistry between you and Roll? Hmm. If there was a word for it. <laughs> uh, special. Honestly, that's the best. I mean, it, it's special. I think it's unique. You know, of course, I'm not a fly on the wall when it comes to other artists and the producers and see how other people work together. But, you know, it, it's comfortable. It's exciting. And it's passionate, man. I, I believe that he has just as much. Because, you know, I've shouted him out for producing my album. He's also a, an artist as well. And, it, you know, he's very invested. He cares. Like, anything that he produces for me, you know, I think he's got just as much love and excitement for it as he does going into his own music. And then him and I, um, he was on stage with me at my very first show when, when I performed with Joyner Lucas. You know, he came up and did a feature with me. So he's definitely a day one. So as you go through uh, the journey, I guess, as you start to level up and try to figure things out as an independent artist, you know, you learn a lot of lessons about trust and people and kind of being guarded and things like that. And it's just really cool to have somebody like that in your corner, you know, because beyond the music stuff, our relationship as friends is really strong, too. And it's, uh, yeah, it's special. That's the best way I can explain it, man. Well, I definitely like it for sure. And I look forward to hearing more music from you fellas down the road. Uh, but for the time being, making a martyr out on digital music platforms XOXO also out on digital music platforms go stream all of that you ain't got nothing else to do we in quarantine anyway so go go stream it go stream it you know you want to um you mentioned Jonah Lucas he's definitely one of my favorite hip hop artists right now and I'm so happy that he finally released this record Definitely hit, met my expectations. I, I mean, I know people already heard some of the songs he's put out these last couple of years, and I'm and, and I and I told people like, look, he's independent artist now. He can put out the music the way he wants to. He ain't got no label uh, in his ear telling him what type of music to do. And um, I, I like the record. I like uh, I like ADHD. Um, um, what was your reaction to the record? What's your thoughts on it? Oh, I love it. I think it's a phenomenal record, man. Um, I, I think it was very strategic how we did single at a time and had a visual for every release or almost every release. And uh, he made it very well anticipated. I do know a lot of people were on their toes. There was a lot of rumors. Actually, I'm pretty sure he came out and said it himself. Everyone was expecting a, an Eminem feature. So I think it threw a few people off, including myself, to not see it. But as he responded to um, people reacting to that, he did say that they have several songs, you know, in the back burner that'll be out soon. So as far as the record as a whole, man, I really liked it. 
I really, really loved 508, 507, 2209. So it was cool to get an album from Jordan Lucas that still had a wide variety of different kind of substance. You know, he he had songs that were just flexing, talking about his success and money. He had songs that were very heartfelt, um, talked about controversial matters. <clears throat> and my favorite, my favorite song on the whole record is the Wills track. Yes. Not only because not only because I'm a huge Will Smith fan, that's my favorite actor, but I actually got a bar on an really song. I said, why do, re- like, why do legends got to die to get the recognition? Obituaries popping before they ever stop to listen. And I just think it's really dope because a lot of times people don't pay homage until someone passes away. And then at that point, you know, it's almost, uh, I, I, of course, I'm not going to say it's all insincere, but a lot of it's bandwagon and a lot of it's people just kind of hopping onto a trend to, to be a part of something. People want to not be left out. So they try to join on but you know to really pay homage like that to somebody that inspired you while they're still alive i thought that was really cool and very rare yeah i'm i'm gonna say that will the music video is front warner favorite music video of the year hands down Whew. like that 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 there are some nice creative videos out there but will takes the cake for me right now we're just over three months into this year. So um, to pay that respect to him and for him to set to, to co-sign it, like, yo, that, that was dope. You know, that's pretty cool. And I will, and I will agree with you. I was caught, I was caught off guard with um, Eminem not being on the album. And yet you got Young Thug on there, but that's just Neil there. But, I understand. Him. Yeah, yeah. I understand it because how Young Thug is perceived, per se. But um, I, I like the album overall for the most part. Look, if if the songs that they did didn't fit the album, don't put it out there just because it's Eminem. He did. He he did all right. He's cool. He's cool. You know, they cool with each other. So it's no hard feeling. Oh, yeah. it's, it's no ill will. Eminem didn't have Joyner on. On his recent release album, so I ain't hear no. Where where's Jordan at? Y'all had good chemistry on Kamikaze. Like people gotta understand, man. You, songs, you know, people got concepts with these albums, and if it don't fit the concept, don't put it out. So I get it as a fan from a fan from an artist standpoint, I guess. So um, it was great chatting with you, man. Um, thank you for your time. Uh, everybody look out for the shows we scheduled um, later on in the year. Uh, XOXO out right now, digital music platforms. Making a Martyr out on digital music platforms as well. And if the Tech 9 show still good to go for October, I will be there. Manchester Music Hall. And hopefully I will meet you in person this time because I was there. I know, man. I, I missed you last yeah. time. I know, man. I'll have you a shirt, too. Yeah, yeah. So, um, drama, and it's spelled J-R-U-M-M-A, not D-R-A-M-A. <laughs> that's basically how <laughs> My you... My other alias is J Rama, because that's how most people call it. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah, yeah. it's not correct, but yeah. I just go with it anymore. Yeah, uh, uh, and shout out to the homie John Clark, um, who introduced you that at that previous Tech 9 show. He is quite the character, but I respect the dude. He's absolutely, man. Yeah, yeah. So uh, great chatting with you, man. Um, continue to be safe, and uh, hopefully, when it's all said and done, I'll see you in October. Hey, sounds good, man. And before I hop off here, I want to, I do want to promote something real quick. Go ahead. So uh, speaking, so shout out to Ro again, and Razakel. He's actually part of the Shrunken Head Entertainment. So. Um, you know, being new to that kind of horrorcore scene, it was really cool. He he actually become a if you're not familiar, he become a super group with Razakel. Mm-hmm. So Ritual of Ether and Razakel together are the Serpentines, and they just released their self titled album. And I had a feature on it. Um, it's really an honor to be on such a dope body of work. It's sick. So I want to shout that out. XOXO is the newest single. But look at my features. Look up Masks by, uh, by Serpentines featuring Drama. It's uh, probably one of the hardest verses I've ever put down, and it just come out a couple days ago. So I definitely want to promote that. And if anybody's new and wants to follow me, 
it's at Drama Music, and that's all my social medias. And if uh, and if that's harder to remember, just go to drama.com and you'll find all my stuff. And again, thank you, man. It's always been a pleasure to talk with you. Please.